Rick Tillman. Welcome to this week's Child Seekers Report. This week we're going to take a ride around with Corporal Christine Gregorio of the City Police to see what some of Rutland's unsung heroes, the crossing guards, do in order to keep our children safe. And we also have some safety tips for the parents and there's children going to and from school and also for the children when they go. So we're going to take off now with Chris and we're going to take a ride around the city and see if we can uh, talk to a uh, crossing guard hopefully and, and find out from their point of view what some of the dangers are with children going to, to and from school. As we can see today from the condition of the roads, we have icy patches and this is a fairly heavily, heavily traveled area. Um, what should we explain to the people about when approaching a school area, especially when you can see the kids and the signs about the speed limit and what precautions they should take uh, in keeping children safe? Well, the first thing I think we should bring to mind is the, the flashing lights, the yellow lights over the 25 mile zone. Whenever any driver sees that, they should know that number one, it's a school zone, and number two, when the lights are flashing, that children are in the area. That's what they're for. Um, that means that they are to obey the limit, at least. Most of the times, they're probably like days today, going to have to go a little bit slower, uh, just for safety's sake, for their own sake, as well as the kids. Um, children have a tendency to know that there's cars around. They, as you can see, there are numerous cars parked here, and they're not always aware of moving traffic as right. they should be. Uh, it makes it more important for the drivers of the vehicles that are moving to be aware of the kids. Right. So an ideal when the road is totally clear and dry, I mean, 25 miles an hour is a maximum. That's when we want to drive. And we can see that these roads are, uh, are dangerous. Uh, anyone walking on this road might fall. Say nothing about a car trying to brake for a child crossing the street. Right. Um, so on a day like today, maybe 10 miles an hour would be an appropriate speed. Yeah. All right. Uh, with these children, as we can see, we're, they're probably getting fairly close to getting out of school. I noticed when we came by the signs that they were flashing yellow, uh, cautioning motorists that they were around. On, we are also parked right across the street here from, from a crosswalk, and due to the, some sand and, and ice on the road, um, it's a little difficult to see. Once again, one of the things that I notice when, I, when I'm watching the children leaving is motorists uh, not observing the crosswalk. And, you know, I think it's important that they understand what they're there for and that there are laws pertaining to crosswalks and people in them. Maybe you can uh, explain a little bit about those. Uh, because I've seen a lot of times when kids will step into a crosswalk or even adults and the motorists just continue to proceed. Right. Um, when a motorist does see a child or an adult in a crosswalk, they are required to stop for those pedestrians. That's, that's a clear area for them to cross in. And they're supposed to stop. Doesn't always happen. Uh, especially around school zones with the children involved, it's really up to, to us adults that are driving to watch out for these kids. Most of the time in school zones and in these areas, there are crossing guards to make sure that motorists stop and to protect our children. But that's not so in all areas. Mm -hmm. Usually once you're two to three blocks away from the school, there are no more crossing guards. And it's up to the children to remember to wait, to look both directions, to let the oncoming traffic continue before they go across. But it's also up to the motorist to know that if a child's halfway across the street, stop and let them get the rest of the way. Don't make them stand there in the middle of the road. Right. So moms and dads t should teach their children to use the crosswalks, for one thing. That's where they are going to be the safest because they are located at the corners where cars are normally come to a stop for a stop sign anyway. And as moms and dads and drivers, we should always look for that pedestrian entering the crosswalk just to make sure that it would be safe. Because I do know that the children, I always tell them to be safe, you cross in the crosswalks. And I think that's very important. And one of the things that I look at is the people that aren't stopping for the crosswalks. The children uh, sometimes say, why am I crossing here when I could cross here with no traffic coming right in the middle of the road? Mm -hmm. We get them in the crosswalks as, as motorists. Uh, you know, We have to ask that everybody help. Mm -hmm. And one of the things to do is to stop for these crosswalks so that the children can recognize it as a clear passage from one side of the road to the other. Mm -hmm. in, in most cases, I find most drivers, adult drivers, 
don't have a problem. They're usually pretty good about watching what they're doing around the school areas. You're going to get a few people that are going to forget or they're in a hurry or they're late or whatever. But those are the people that cause the accidents and that's what we're trying to avoid. Right. Right. Well, that's, that's good. I think that, that helps out. One of the things that I also wanted to mention uh, with moms and dads, um, seat belts. I, I know that um, I wear my seat belt all the time and thank God I've never had to um, had an accident with it on but I think with the children especially the larger ones when you're getting into the the uh, teenagers you know that's a great way of, of protecting your children is to make sure that the, when they're in the car they are properly restrained Definitely. Um, because we're I, required at the police department to wear seat belts at all times when we're in the cruisers right and the Vermont State Police are also mm -hmm. and we ask that of our volunteers that when they're out as a volunteer to, to please set an example um, I, I did happen to come upon an accident where some uh, people here from out of state hit a, a cow here, here in Vermont and they were wearing their seat belts which prevented them from going to the windshield. Involved with safety patrol walking the smaller children and the younger children down to the corners where they need to break to, to head for home in their own separate directions. Um, those people are a great help to, to the crossing guards because they assist keeping the kids in line and making sure they're not throwing snowballs and right. um, misbehaving in any particular way so that they get across the street in an orderly fashion. Um, I'm hoping that some, sometimes somewhere along the line a couple of those patrols, those little safety patrols, will be crossing guards too. Sure. Do you think we might be able to stop and just briefly talk to the crossing guard about what he feels are important parts of his job? Sure, I don't see any reason why not, uh, depending on whether I'll or not they're you. busy. Right. Okay, now we've, we've stopped the car, uh, and we're going to talk to Pam Petrie, who is a crossing guard uh, who crosses several hundred children each day across the street safely. And Pam, I just wanted to ask you, what are some of the problems you see as a crossing guard in the children going to and from the schools and both in the morning and the afternoon? Well, in the, mo in the morning and in the afternoon is a busy time to cross children. You see a lot of uh, traffic through here. Um, people that aren't paying attention. This is a throughway right by Dana here connecting Route 4 and Route 7 to get by the lights and lots of times your public just is not paying attention to the speed limit by the school area and they aren't uh, consciously aware of the children. They're maybe consciously aware of their own child once they get them to school or of other and that's it. Once they're by here then they forget and they're just going too fast uh, for existing conditions or just too fast through a school zone area and some of these children are small and one of the things that their parents don't always do even with kindergartners is walk the kids to school and as a crossing guard um, we really don't we watch the children but I have authority only in crossing the children once the children are across the street then I have no more authority um, the parents should school their children in all the do's and don'ts of not getting into strangers' cars, not talking to strangers, etc. Um, and use a buddy system going home from school until they can get to their uh, parents. Uh, parents will very often ask the crossing guard to watch their children until they get to a certain crossing, which we can if we're not busy ourselves here. Um, but. I think the driver should become a little more aware around students that they should be going slower. Um, 25 miles an hour is the speed limit. They should be going slower. Watching the child that may suddenly dart back into the street after a ball or a plaything or what after, whatever, suddenly decide they need to go back to school and run back in the street. and. It's just a busy time for a crossing guard. Do you find it pretty hectic for yourself? I mean, some days you just feel that it's uh, more Some than days, yeah, you do find it, it, it's more. Because not only as a crossing guard, you have to deal with getting the kids across the street. Um, parents get irate. Sometimes the school doesn't get out on time and they want their kids home. So they've got a job they've got to get to in the morning or the afternoon. And uh, they want their children over here. And we have our what we're told to do by our supervisor, which is Mr. Aldo Manfredi. And, you know, we have rules that we have to abide by. And a crossing guard won't take on due risk of crossing children. In other words, right. they will cross the children when they feel it's safe to cross the children. Right. Um, and you just have to do that and kind of close your ears to what parents sometimes are screaming, come on. And 
and well it's you know the parents if they want to make sure their child's a little safer maybe there's a few things they can do such as the buddy system or walking them to and from school themselves or driving uh, they, them one of the things i feel that they should do kindergarten age on is to teach the child the proper crossing techniques to look both ways for cars and to use your crossing guards that's what we're here for us what we're paid for is to cross the children safely and uh the children will ask us to do all kinds of things. Their parents aren't here. Will you wait with me? Or, you know, things like this. And we can help them to an extent. But, uh, you know, as I say, our main function is just to cross the uh, children safely. And by staying at a crossing day after day, you get to know who the parents are. And you begin to notice if there's strangers that shouldn't be in the area. You know, having stand here day after day, I, I'm here three times a day, and, and you get to recognize certain children belong to certain parents and come right. at a certain time and right. cars that they get into. And if we feel that there's a situation that's unsafe, we have an emergency number we can reach our supervisor at or, you know, contact somebody. Right. We really appreciate it. And, um Hope you've helped us to, to make our, our show this week. Thanks again. If we didn't love the kids, we wouldn't do it. <laughs>